Good morning, everyone, and welcome to First Five. I'm Pastor Steve, and my goal today is to help you get your day off to a great start. And the way we do that is by spending a little time every day in the Word of God and in prayer. Now, if you have been with us, you know that the way we usually do this is every morning I invite you to read with me one chapter of Scripture. And most recently, we have been working our way through some of Paul's letters. Uh, we finished up 1 Corinthians and have been now in 2 Corinthians. And today, we come to the final chapter of 2 Corinthians, chapter 13. And so, my invitation to you would be that when we're all done the lesson, you take a moment to read the whole of 2 Corinthians chapter 13. It is a relatively short chapter, but I think it's important, and I think you'll find it interesting and helpful. Now, for the purpose of the lesson, we're going to look at just a portion of that. We'll be looking at verses 5 through 10. And so, if you have a Bible handy, or if you want to pull it up on your phone, I invite you to join me in 2 Corinthians Chapter 13, beginning in verse 5. Here the Apostle Paul writes, Examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you? Unless, of course, you fail the test. And I trust that you will discover that we have not failed the test. Now, we pray to God that you will not do anything wrong. Not so that people will see that we have stood the test, but so that you will do what is right, even though we may seem to have failed. For we cannot do anything against the truth, but only for the truth. We are glad whenever we are weak, but you are strong. And our prayer is, is that you may be fully restored. This is why I write these things when I am absent, that when I come, I may not have to be harsh in my use of authority. The authority the Lord gave me for building you up, not for tearing you down. When you read the whole chapter, you are going to see that Paul, through most of this, is speaking words of warning, words of admonition to his readers. Over these past two letters, 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians, we have seen Paul address some important and significant areas. There have been struggles in the church. There have been leadership issues, and most notably, there has been significant unrepentant sin. And so Paul has used both his personal visits and his letters to try to bring correction in some areas where that was needed. Honestly, he didn't like doing it. He says to them, I am addressing it in this letter so that when I come in person, when we are together, we can have a more positive and uplifting visit. He doesn't want this admonition to be really just the center of all of his encounters with them. So, even though he doesn't like having to address these things, as one called by God to oversee and mentor these churches, he knows that he has a responsibility to do so. And let's be honest, none of us likes being on the receiving end of that. None of us likes being corrected. We don't like being held accountable for our sin. And Paul knows that he's not making any friends when he does what he has to do. No doubt there will be people who are unhappy with him, people who respond perhaps even in anger towards him. But this is his responsibility in Christ. And it is his authority given to him by God. Just as he says in the end of this chapter. But then... 
at the very end, he says something that I think is really important that I don't want us to miss. Let's go back for a minute to the very end of verse 10, where he says, The authority the Lord gave me for building you up, not tearing you down. You see, when people say hard things to us, it often feels like they are trying to tear us down. But if accountability is done properly in a Christ-like way, it should not be to tear down the other person, but for their benefit to make them better, to help them grow. If there is a time in your life, a moment when you must hold another person, another believer, accountable, when you have to speak into their life in some way that might be hard to say and hard for them to hear, before you speak, stop and check your heart. Are my motives right? Am I approaching this in a Christ-like way? Because if we are, our heart's desire will be to use this moment to build them up, to help them to become the best of who Christ has made them to be. And by the way, if we're ever on the receiving end, I would encourage us to trust that God is using that person to speak into our lives for our good and to build us up. Would you join me in prayer? Lord, Paul had to have some hard conversations in this church. They had some issues. They had some struggles. And those are not easy things to do. But as Christ followers, sometimes you're going to call us to have those hard conversations. And Lord, we see that Paul is very clear that when he does this, it is not to tear them down but to the very opposite, to build them up, to, to help to make them better in Christ, to, to get them on the right path, a path that leads to life and joy. And so I pray, God, that if we ever have to be in that position, that that could be our heart as well, that we approach that in a way that seeks to build up the other person. And Lord, if we ever have to be on the receiving end of admonition or accountability, Help us to see it as your way of building us up. And I pray all that in Jesus' holy name. Amen. All right, everyone, have a wonderful day, and I will talk to you tomorrow. God bless.